everyone welcome along to today's live video it is it's tuesday today and it's day something of a lockdown who knows all i know is we're here and today we're going to do some drawing and coloring actually we're not i don't even know why i said that we're just going to do some coloring hello welcome welcome hi Debra. come away in hello hello oh do you know what i was a bit i was almost going to be late today because nicola sturgeon did an announcement actually a few hours ago now about the schools going back um and she said uh, for anyone that's missed it 22nd of february staged a phased return for preschool and p1 to 3 which that is like my household so evie's p2 and mia is school nursery so it's like wow so exciting and then obviously all the mum group chats go bing 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 bing, bing and we're all like Aah. anyway that's been the exciting news today. I feel like every day there's going to be a Nicola Sturgeon announcement. Everyone's just on the BBC News website. Refresh, refresh, refresh. <laughs> it's the only time I watch the news. I'm almost like the travel restrictions don't really affect me. The thing that really affects us is schools. So uh, that's good news. I don't, this my eye is just like, I feel like it's just going to like greet a big tear, but it's not greeting, crying, if you know what I mean. Oh, hi there. Hi. Right, today we're going to do a little bit more colouring. I'm really glad that you liked what we did yesterday. I'm going to do a different page. I've made a wee head start because I have to get these pages coloured in and sent to uh, Yeshin, our lovely photographer, so that he can take the pictures. We're going to use... Oh, do you know what? I'm, uh, I've got the laptop down here and I just went to look at... to check the feed was working and the video from yesterday was playing where I had my yellow dress on. <laughs> odd if I had pink on. I do have pink on. Right, there we go. Hi everyone. Jess, Sarah. Sarah or Sarah? I don't know. Sarah Emmond. Leslie, hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we'll do a wee spot more colouring. I'm going to be um, going back to the Statler Ergo Soft Pencils today. Um, so yesterday we were using the Arteza triangular pencils and I've got so many questions about how to sharpen triangular pencils and I'm going to share a huge huge secret and something that will change your life when it comes to sharpening a uh, triangular pencils here it is are you ready <laughs> you don't need a specialist sharpener I just use my normal one just because it's a triangular pencil and I know why you would think it you don't need a special sharpener I just use my regular one Yesterday I did find, I feel like the Arteza pencils are slightly chunkier, like a, a bigger pencil when you're holding them. And I was using the larger of the two holes in my um, Statler pencil sharpener at first. And then I shift onto the smaller one to get like the point. Um, so see how that works for you. But yeah, you don't need a pe special pencil sharpener. I just use this one. The best pencil sharpener I have is a wee rose gold metal one that I just got in a stationery kit from Tesco. So the reason I like this sharpener is because I'm supremely lazy and I like that it keeps all the sharpenings in there. Up until yesterday, I've never really used the larger hole, but there you go. Um, and then my bin oh, down here is just full of pencil sharpenings. Um, so that's the only reason that I prefer that one because yeah, I mean, anyway, that's that's the only reason. I think with pencil sharpeners, they are all a bit hit and miss. I don't necessarily think you need to spend a lot of money on a pencil sharpener. Case in point, the one that I got in that art set, which probably cost like 10 pence altogether, but it's brilliant. But you, but you do have to stand at the bin. Right, enough, enough chit chat. Let's say, uh, let's do this. Okay, folks. Here we go. So this is uh, the page that we're going to colour today. Oh, do you know what? I wonder if I could set the lives up to record the other way around. I'm having issues with sound and it's because the microphone is on this side of my phone and quite often my head is like down, <laughs> down here, which is why it doesn't pick up the sound so well. And I was looking into external mics. I don't think it's going to work for a Facebook Live. But there you go, that's what I've been colouring so far. So for those of you that haven't seen this page yet, here we have like a underwater city fish situation. 
And over here, I actually think I gave you a sneak peek of this in, was this in Flourish? I can't remember, the free colouring book. Anyway, this is a sneak peek at this picture. Really interesting because it's sort of an island above and below a waterline. I was trying to work out what I was going to do with this bit here because obviously it's going to have a bit of a blue tinge to it. So my feeling is I'm going to colour the bottom bit as I would normally and then I'm going to use my blue pencil and just do a blue wash or a, blue, a really pale blue layer all the way over this bottom section to make it have that blue tint to it. I was trying to think of a fancy way of saying it. There's not. But isn't it pretty? They, um, I really like the Statler Ergo Soft Pencils for this. They're so pale. Well, not so pale, but they're just they're just really nice for building up layers of colour. And I do think, just looking at that on my phone, that the phone isn't doing it justice. But anyway, let's let's colour. Let's colour. Yeah, it was in Flourish. I thought so. I thought so. Couldn't remember there. Uh, so you might have coloured this in already. I wonder, I should have, I should have looked to see how you guys did it. Uh, I've done this week, I was just waiting to do the door. I think I'm going to do the boat door. A nice blue. Uh, when you're sharpening your pencils, I gently turn the pencil unless the lead keeps breaking, in which case turn the sharpener. Don't do what I just did and sharpen it over your picture because often you'll get little wee bits of colour and pigment flaking off it that could contaminate your picture. So uh, I would do it to the side, is basically what I'm saying. So because there's going to be quite a lot of blue in the bottom section of this picture with the sea or lake, I think it's probably the sea, um, I'm not going to have too much blue up here, but I think a nice little bit will just help link everything together, top and bottom. I'm going to do these wee flowers, make sure we're in shot. Uh, let's do them pink so that they look like wee cherry blossoms. You get a really, really good point on these Ergo Softs. So if you were using a softer pencil, for example, a uh, Prismacolor, I just, I can't do this kind of lovely detail with them because I just push too hard and I constantly just break the point of the pencil. So for me, these kind of pencils are better. And I have got my sheets of paper underneath this page just to cushion what we're working on. Oh, <laughs> Natalie's just written a comment in French. Sorry, Natalie. I think she was saying, my English isn't very good. Can you translate this? Do you know what? I did, <laughs> I used to try and put, like it's to, to translate and subtitle what I say is more difficult than you would think because of my accent. I used to have that setting on and the captions were just bananas. Like, <laughs> nowhere near what I was saying. So I eventually just turned it off and thought probably better off um, not having that. It was a bit, it was a bit misleading for everyone. It's just, the, it's the same when you phone up like, uh, you know, when you, when you phone up the gas company or the electricity company and they're like, if you would like to speak about your bill, say, yes, please. And then I'll say it, yes, please. And they go, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. And you're like, oh, come on. I just said it exactly the same as you did. And then I find myself imitating their a rather posh or po posh or sounding English accent. Yes, please. Yes, please. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. It's like, oh. Eventually, top tip for anyone else with a bit of an accent, 
just hold, just hold. Eventually, they put you through to a real life human. There's <laughs> just, just getting nowhere. I would just re remain a dignified silence and know that eventually a human being will pick up the phone. Right, uh, I'm going to do this wee bit of cliff. I was doing it in this grey. I'd thought for ages, like, would I make those cliffs brown? I think grey is quite nice because there's going to be lots of colour other places. In just the same way as yesterday when we had the background of that floral border grey, sometimes a neutral just helps. It fills in the colour, but it doesn't compete, so it sets it back and allows the colours to really sing. If you have everything coloured, I find it's just a bit, wah, like too competing, too much. So a nice wee neutral here and there really helps. Going off camera a wee bit there. Also, I realise I'm all over the shop with my pencil direction and sort of like strokes. I think for bigger bits like this, I tend to mix it up a bit so that it's all a bit of a jumble. And I use these little circular motions sometimes. It's that thing again about being consistently inconsistent. I think if you do that, it just tends to break things up and it doesn't look too obvious when you've got something that's going a different way. Also, I'm gonna do, I'm doing it sort of darker around this outline and then releasing the pressure as we go downwards into the face of the cliff. Again, just so that it's not too competitive around these florals. And I did the same thing with the green here. In fact, I did a dark green first and then I did a light green over the top. And this is the 36th set of Statlers, which I think you can buy on Amazon now for about 450 pounds. No kidding. <laughs> Just the prices are going up. <gasps> Mercy. We should have, um... no, I don't, I don't even know what we should have done. It's <laughs> Just, just the way business is, isn't it? <laughs> I thought I was going to have like some top tip for cheating the system, but alas, no. Oh, I think people are asking when the book's out. So this book is out 31st, is it the 31st of March? I can't remember. The last Tuesday in March in the US and Canada. And then Thursday the 1st of April in the UK. This picture I gave you a sneak peek of in Flourish, the free colouring book that I gave away during lockdown, which you can still get by the way. I think just go on my website and search for Flourish. Um, but yeah, it was always destined for the book, but I thought I would give you a sneak peek of it. So you too could print this one out and colour it today if you so fancied. You don't have to wait for this one. I just thought it was a really nice image. The whole idea of the book is that you're going on this imaginative journey and travelling to these far-flung enchanted places because in a year or two years where we've not gone anywhere, it's definitely time for an adventure. So we can go places with this colouring book. And what better place to go than a magical island with castles and an underwater cave and beautiful cherry blossoms and a little lantern and a ship coming in, docking or maybe maybe going away. Looks like it's going away with nobody on it. They're all a, uh, they're all below deck having a cup of tea. It's nothing, it's not spooky at all. Now, I think I'm going to make this wee bit down here touch darker. Oh, I didn't do those tree trunks. Let me do them. Just going to go with a conventional brown <laughs> for those. Right, let's do a wee bit of the castle. Just slide this down a touch. Um do this little bit here. Now, 
I might do the carousel because it's all green. Hmm. I should really think out my color palette before I get to this stage, but I think I'm gonna do the roof in this. Will I do the roof gray or will we do it brown? I think we'll keep it quite cool tones for the castle so that it's all a similar color palette. I'm just looking at this uh, archway here and thinking I've maybe forgotten to draw something because that's such an unusual shape. Sometimes I sketch things out in the early stages of the <laughs> of the creation of the artwork. So I draw it all in pencil and then I put a new piece of paper down and ink over the top. And sometimes, just because I can see both the pencil lines and the ink, it can be a little bit tricky to see what's been inked and what hasn't. And also, if I'm inking it and then I go away and do something else and come back again, I do I do just miss bits. Like there's there's bits in some of the books where I've drawn like a the bell, the petals of a bluebell, and then completely forgotten to ink the stalk and the leaf that attaches it. So it's just a random floating flower. Um, so I love it when you guys spot those and send them to me like, what is this? Like, oh yeah, that's, that's just a mistake. Also, another thing that people spot is if the pen wobbles or I make a wee mistake, I, um, I just think to myself, well, I'm going to sort that out when we scan it in. So for example, if I was drawing down here and then I sneezed, achoo, and it goes like that, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not really a disaster because I can just erase that digitally but it's often quite difficult to remember where all those little bits are so I'll draw a little arrow and just point to it so that when I'm scanning it in I'll see the arrow and be like oh yeah mistake and then I can fix it but then sometimes I'll see the arrow when we're on digital zoom in fix the mistake forget to delete the arrow forget to then erase the arrow so there's just a few, uh, there's a few little arrows hidden in my colouring books, pointing at nothing in particular. There's definitely one in um, World of Flowers, because I remember we were doing a live tutorial and people were like, that's one of the pages with the arrows on it. And I was like, oh yes, so it is. So there you go, they're hidden like little Easter eggs. I love that, it's a bit of a story, isn't it? Now you'll know, so if you see, and this is what they look like. I'll show you on this. They usually look like that. If you see some a little arrow like that, <laughs> it's because I've made a mistake. And you won't necessarily see the mistake, because as I say, I've, I've probably fixed the mistake and then just forgotten to erase the marker. And for anyone wondering, if you've got a copy of World of Flowers, the page with the truck, the delivery truck that has like all the flowers tumbling out the back of it, they are. <laughs> Steph's away to go look for it. See if you can find it, Steph. Right, that's our... Well, I do... I might do all the roofs. It's just boring for you. I won't do them all just now because it is... I appreciate it's not the most interesting thing to colour. I'm going to go over at least this roof with a second grey. See how it looks. So I'm doing it darker on this side so that it will pale out over here with a wee strip of white to make it look like the sun's sort of catching it on that side. And if you notice, I did the same with the little toadstools. So there's a wee white highlight on the side of them. If you want to do that and you're just not confident at getting the, the pressure right, to release the pressure to have that white on there. By the way, you don't need to worry so much in here because you just anticipate that this building would be covering up this bit of roof so it wouldn't have quite so much of a shadow on it. it yeah, if you're not quite confident about leaving that shadow, highlight even, just colour it in as normal. Then get a white gel pen and just draw a wee line down there. Does the same job. <laughs> right, a uh, brickwork stonework let me think mm. part of me wants to do it kind of like orangey sandstone but I think that could just look bananas will we will we do like a pink castle oh got off screen sorry there you go 
Um, what would we do? Yellow and black. I don't know what the yellow and black one was. Um, or will we do a blue cat? Oh no, it's gonna be blue and it's gonna be blue down here, isn't it? But maybe that'd be quite nice, like the symmetry of blue and blue. Pink, will we do pink? Wait a minute, we'll zoom out and then you can all decide. What do you think, folks? I'll just comment. I'll just, I'll just stay wait. Oh, Millie says, can you do backgrounds? Yeah, I'm not going to do it in this just in case I muck it up because um, I need to send this to be photographed imminently. Oh, pink and purple. Um, but backgrounds, yeah, we'll do chalk background. That's probably the, the easiest kind of background to do, I think. Oh, orangey pink, orangey pinky purple. Emily, what colour would you do the castle? Um, yeah. We'll do, oh, it looks really fuzzy on my laptop, but okay on my phone. We'll do chalk, chalk pastel backgrounds. They're the best. It's just the chalk can, uh, can get all over a lot of different things. I don't want the rest of the book to have a, I'm, I'm really messy, to have chalky fingerprints on it. Just waiting to see if Emily tells me what color to do it in. I trust, I trust Emily's judgment. Not that I don't trust everyone else's, I'm just interested. Emily, you're too late. <laughs> We're just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it pinky purple. Oh, I bet maybe we should do it blue. Oh, I think we're gonna do a bit of everything. That's what we'll do. Right, I'm gonna do this wee bit here. Oh, Emily did hers grey as well. See, so, yeah, I think let's do it grey blue and then we can add some, we can merge it into purples as well. I'm thinking this sort of carry on. Right, so I'm going to do this bit first. I'm on, yeah, let me just zoom in again. There we go, Phil. I don't know what kind of stone this would be, would it be in a blue grey? Maybe kind of like a slate castle, granite. Most of Aberdeen is built out of granite, actually, out of one quarry. We've got a quarry called Rubus Law Quarry in Aberdeen, just a massive hole in the ground. I think you can probably see it from space. Anyway, that's where all the granite to build the buildings of Aberdeen came from. And here's a really weird thing. Granite's porous. So Glasgow has the same issue. Glasgow is predominantly made out of sandstone. I don't know why we do this. It is also a porous stone. So we basically build our houses out of stones that suck in water. Hence why, I mean, that's not actually why we've got a leak just now, that's something else, but it doesn't help. How random, eh? Let, let's, pick a, let's pick a rock to build houses out of. Yeah, let's pick that one that's got all the holes in it. <laughs> what? It just makes no sense. <gasps> time is it? Oh, it's only 23 minutes past. We'll just do this wee bit and then I'll I'll wrap up for, for the day. So by shading the grey over the top of the blue, you're just connecting it back to that roof. Sometimes it's nice to have everything sort of mismatched and not connected. You don't want it all to have this, I don't know, sameness to it. Other times I quite like that. This is one of those times. I think it's quite nice to have it a bit more coherent. And I, um, should have done that, hold on. I'll do a wee bit zoomed out for a while. I can't, I'm just, I can't not do this. I just want to do it. Did I do it with this grey? 
Or was it a different grey? No, I think it was this one. Oh my word. That is why you should do all the bits that are similar in a winner, I think. Unless, I mean, some people do keep really good notes about what they've done with their colour choices. I'm not, I'm not one of those kind of people. But I've got a memory like a sieve. I can't, as you can tell, I can barely remember what I'm saying from a start of a sentence to the end of it. Never mind what colouring pencil I used five minutes ago. Also, look at this shambles. <laughs> They're just so messy. I need to learn to just take one colouring pencil out, use it and put it back. I'm always telling the kids, put one toy away before you take the next one out. They don't listen to me and I don't take my own advice either. My desk is just littered with colouring pencils and then I just ram them back in however I can fit them. Right, that's all I'm going to do for today. Well, on camera anyway, because... We've all got places we don't have, no, nobody's got anywhere to go. I was always going to say, we've all got places to be, people to see. No, nobody's got any anywhere to go because it's COVID, but hey-ho. It's quite nice, isn't it? I'm pleased with that today. The Algo Soft's just are a different kind of pencil. Let me find what page we were working on the other day. Um, Not that one. I can't find it. Well, we did that. Oh, I finished. I did a bit more of that. Remember, we were doing that the other day. Th these two, I did the Argo Softs. I can't remember. Did we, I think I did Prisma Color for that one? I think we were using Argo Soft. I can't really remember. But anyway, that page is looking quite nice. I haven't. Don't think we're going to color that. I might color a little bit of it. Okay, if you want to know more about what I might and might not color, <laughs> come back tomorrow. Thrilling. Sorry. Oh, oh that was a really good comment. Mm, I know this will sound silly, but when I was a little girl, I always wondered if the colour book artist would approve of how I coloured each page. Nothing like self-imposed stress to a six-year-old. I'm 49 now and watching you last year has answered <laughs> this little girl's questions. I love seeing them. I absolutely love seeing how you colour the pictures and it's never how I um, thought you would colour them. I actually think of the colouring books as a collaboration. So the the people say to me, like, how do you feel when you finish the book? Well, it's not finished. It's not finished until you colour it. Like, it's my job to do the artwork, but it's your job to do the colour. And it's not finished until those two things come together. And it's like, such a joy to like see how every person has this unique way of tackling a page and a picture and I've never once gone oh no they've they've ruined that what what were they thinking I mean <laughs> like that would just be so random it's actually just the biggest honor because people spend longer coloring the pictures than I do drawing them which is bananas but you know it takes me a couple of days usually to do a page most people spend much longer than that uh, colouring a picture and you know it's just it's lovely I get to collaborate with literally millions of people all over the world and it's a delight I'm so pleased that the internet has been invented so that we can share each other's pictures and I can see what you've done with it because imagine if this had been 20 years ago before we were all on social media the only way I would be able to see how you colour those pictures is if you cut your book up or took a photograph and posted it to me. And really, how many people are going to do that? So although I'm quite, oh, I've got to be careful about how much we're on social media, it does have some wonderful, wonderful applications like building communities and sharing artwork and sharing ideas and inspiring people. Colouring just came at the perfect time. So Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg and all you other clever people that invented the internet and did all the things. I know there's like some dubious things around elections that you did, but in terms of colouring, thank you. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> right. Um, da -da 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 -da. Thank you so much. They're all just quite happy comments. It was so funny. Yesterday, I jumped onto Instagram to do a live, which I don't often do. and it like wasn't very good 
Uh, so I just basically said hi and was like showing them some stuff. Uh, they don't they don't ask questions like you guys do. It's like such a different audience. It was all like hi, hola, blah, blah, loads of Brazilian flags and just general like it was like walking into a party where you've not seen people for ages and I'm like hi, hi, hi. But with you guys, I feel because we see each other all the time. It's just like this ongoing conversation. Oh, and talking about conversations. Um, the loveliest lady, whose name I can't remember offhand, sent me a card. If you sent me a card to the studio, a yellow card with just the loveliest message on it, I got it. Thank you so much. I am not ashamed to say I shed a wee tear when I read it. It was just the most beautiful, heartfelt message. So I'm really sorry I can't remember your name, but please know that I got it and it was just, thank you. It just, yeah. It was exactly what I needed to read at exactly the right time. So, bless you. Right, oh, we're off. I'm going. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Exactly half past four on the button. I'll see you back here tomorrow. We'll do a bit more colouring. Um, might have to finish a page that we're working on. I'm just sort of dotting about all over the place at the moment. Thanks very much. See you then. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Have fun. Be nice. Be kind. Bye-bye.